Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Should we start? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Or, good evening. Good evening to everybody. All right. We are very much in the Caribbean literature. Just the day, day before yesterday, we are discussing the novel of V.S. Naipaul, a Caribbean novelist. And today we are going to be paired with more about Caribbean creativity. At this time, we thought of another Caribbean section of literature. There is Caribbean poetry in block six. Block six has as usual six units. The title of this blog is Caribbean Poetry, Derek Walcott and Edward Brathwaite. The units are unit one, introduction to Caribbean poetry, unit two, Derek Walcott one, unit three, Derek Walcott two, unit four, Brathwaite one, unit five, Brathwaite two, and the last unit, theoretical paradigms for Caribbean literature. So anyway, let us come to unit first, that is introduction to Caribbean poetry. Sometimes we seem baffled with the question, what Caribbean is? Caribbean is the name of a nation. I'm using the word A because Caribbean was a great geographical area within which several nations exist. And all the nations have their cultural identity as Caribbean. So Caribbean means the, that geographical regions which were once under the domination of colonialism practiced by the European nations like France, Britain, Spain, and Portugal. These were the colonizers who had dominated over the geographical areas of West Indies and all the geographical regions, now though they are free, are called to be Caribbean nations. Uh, in the year 1962, the geographical areas which were directly governed by the British administration came into a political organization and its name was West Indian Confederation. West Indian Confederation was formed in the year 1962 for political, literary, and cultural development of West Indian regions. But unfortunately, this federation got dissolved because of political indifference. And another important factor was that all the islands like St. Lucia, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Dominica, Guinea, all these small islands claimed their independence and by the year 1970, all of these islands were declared free. And as a result of this, West Indian Federation had no role to play. But till today, West Indian Federation has one dominating role in the field of sports. This is why the cricket team which is formed of Caribbean players is known as West Indies team. Besides the area of cricket uh, sports, West Indies has no role at all. Okay, this is the background. Now come to the term colonialization. More or less, you are acquainted or you have been acquainted with the word colonialization. I will not 
describe what colonialization is, but I will begin with the point, why colonialization? Why did colonialization take place in the 15th century AD? What was the motive behind it? The only visible motive was commercial or economic growth of master or mother race. That the British people conquer over half of the geographical area of the world only with the purpose of gaining commercial benefit. So when Columbus came here, when Columbus came to West Indian area in the year 1492, actually in him the economic prosperity was inherent but overtly he declared to the people of the world that i am discovering different regions of the world out of curiosity not out of economic interest so after columbus discovery of west indies the spaniards came first they established their settlements here and there on different islands after the Spaniards came the Dutch, then the Portuguese, then the French, Spanish, and lastly came the English people. And in this way, the branches of colonialization grew and grew. Almost every part of Caribbean area came under the sway of different colonial nations of Europe. The British colonial power proved to be most tremendous among all the colonial powers. So gradually, the remaining colonial nations like France, Spain, Portugal, they withdrew themselves from colonization in Caribbean nations, whereas the British people continued being the rulers of Caribbean nations till 1970. So in the way of their rampant colonialization, the British people grew the farming of sugar plantation. They, they found that the soil and the climate of Caribbean region was very suitable to the growth of sugar cane. So sugarcane plantation were built here and there. And for this, they needed a number of laborers, manual laborers. Initially, the British colonial masters imported African slaves to this Caribbean land. Plenty of African slaves were brought and they were utilized in sugarcane plantations. But unfortunately, a bill was passed in the British Parliament in the 18th century that the rubbish system of slavery should be abolished. And slavery was abolished after the abolition of slavery. The British masters brought laborers from China and India. So indentured laborers were brought from these two countries. So after the African citizen, African slaves got their settlement in Caribbean nations, the next population was that from India and that from China. So the population of three nations were assembled in Caribbean nation, that is African slaves, Indian and Chinese indentor laborers. And with these people, the colonial masters grew their plantation. They made economic exploitation side by side. The laborers were exploited. And gradually, the laborers who had been taken from China and India became much more powerful than the African slaves. The China, mainly the Indian population, they evolved into middle class status. They came out with education, and as a result of this, 
revolution started in caribbean nations and this revolution was ultimated in the freedom of different islands but before the revolutions undertaken by the indian citizens sorry caribbean indian citizens revolution had already started against the slavery system in the year 16th century and this revolution against slavery had incited by the renaissance of 14th century ad anyway in 16th century the first revolution against slavery broke out in cuba the cuban south african slaves wanted freedom from their british masters which they could not get then in 17th century in antigua another revolution broke out so from 1690 to 1740 a series of revolutions broke out in guinea area and guerrilla war came into practice by the maroon tribal community the maroon tribal community under two guerrilla fight against the british soldiers and this battle of guerrilla continued for 20 to 25 years so one point is clear that whenever a nation or whenever a race faces a political revolution the revolution is instigated by political elements all political revolutions are instigated by political elements but there was a unique revolution in caribbean region and it was revolution on the basis of language so our discussion of caribbean poetry will have an inkling towards the colonial politics of language and the post colonial retaliation of language so what is colonial politics of language that the british people dominated the psychological political social religious and economic aspects of the people of uh, caribbean region the caribbean people they did not have anything called culture society and religion it is the british culture british religion that dominated everywhere so the british people imposed the circulation of english language in caribbean states they told that english language be read written and taught everywhere in all the caribbean islands accordingly the natives of caribbean including the african slaves and the indian and chinese indentured laborers were forced to learn english language the indian indentured laborers wanted hindi to be the language there the chinese wanted chinese language to be the language there whereas the african slaves did not have any homogeneous language as the slaves belong to different tribal communities of africa they used to speak different or heterogeneous tribal languages but the domination of british people prevailed english became the national language they are till the year 1970 but after the dissolution of west indian federation and independence accorded to all the territories a voice rose against the establishment of english language the caribbean citizens declared that creole should be their own language c r e o l e 
Creole was to be accepted as the national language of the Caribbean islands. So after the independence of all the islands, the Caribbean citizens declared Creole to be the national language until today. Creole is the national language in Caribbean nations, whereas English is the secondary language. Now, let me put some spotlight on literature in Creole or literature in Caribbean Creole language. That with the growth of Creole language, the Caribbean writers developed their natural sensibility towards the composition of poems. So poetry was the first genre of literature that saw the sunshine. And the first generation of Caribbean poets were all colonial poets. For example, Claude McKay. Claude McKay was a poet of 1912. And this man has composed two anthologies of poems. One, Songs of Jamaica and Consta Ballads of 1912. In these poems, McKay has presented the colonial masters to be the masters of the universe. So when the literature celebrates the triumphant of the masters, it is called colonial literature. The next important poets of this past generation were Una Masson and Louis Bennett. All these three poets were all colonial poets. Now, question was that why was there the combined voice in favor of Creole language in Caribbean nations? The only reasons for the establishment of Creole language were first. The Caribbean people wanted to non-standardize English language by interpolating Creolitic words in English language. And this was a post-colonial motive. So while we were discussing post-colonialism, I have told you that the clear characteristic of colonial literature is the exploitation of English language by the interpolation of DC words or regional words. So the Caribbean people interpolated, injected the words from Creole language into English language. And as a result of this, English language got substandardized. Second, post-colonial motive behind the introduction of Creole words to liberate Caribbean literature from the influence of English literature. That with the introduction of Creole language, the Creole speaking people wanted to reflect their own culture and society instead of reflecting the culture and society of British people. So the Caribbean culture, Caribbean society, Caribbean uh, cultural elements gradually seeped into Caribbean literature through Creole language. So the Caribbean literature came up to the standard of proclaiming its own liberated identity. So before 1940, the total of Caribbean literature was colonial literature. The Caribbean poets, novelists, and prose writers of 1940s were following the footprints of neoclassical, romantic, and Victorian literature of Great Britain. 
but the post 1950 caribbean literature shows a different figure different picture the post 1950 caribbean writers reflected caribbean culture and society instead of british culture and society so in the year sorry in the decade 1960s caribbean literature became a self developed literature so this is about the first unit now friends come to the second unit second unit is named derek walcott first here in our syllabus we are prescribed with two poems of derek walcott derek walcott was a poet and we have to read two of his poems so derek walcott was born in the year 1930 in the island of saint lucia his father was an african civil servant and his mother was a british woman so mark a cosmopolitan characteristic was found in the family of derek walker african father british mother and later on derek walker was influenced by french language so the influence of creole influence of english and influence of french was there on this man Bert Walcott got Nobel Prize in the year 1992 for literature, and then he became a popular figure. At the time, he was he had already established himself as a poet in Caribbean Caribbean literature, and he was serving a Caribbean university as a professor in English literature. So. the most eminent work of walcott is omeros o m e r o s omeros is an epical poem a poem having epic characteristics as a poet walcott has been influenced by the british poets like philip larkin ted hughes t s eliot and odin because of his frequent imitation of british poets derek derek walcott is charged with blind imitation of english literature still then creole or creolitic elements are they are in galore in his poetry his most eminent anthologies of poems are in a green night in the year 1962 the castaway and other poems in the year 1965 and the gulf in the year 1970 three major anthologies of poems composed by walcott now let us come to his first poem as prescribed in our syllabus the name of the poem is crusoe's journal C R U S O E apostrophe S Crusoe's Journal, and without informing you about the influential sources of this poem, Crusoe's Journal, I just cannot carry forward. So, what are the sources which were drawn upon by? walcott to compose this famous poem there were three sources first genesis the first book of christian religion found in the bible second daniel defoe's novel robinson crusoe third robert Lo robert louis stevenson's novel treasure island so these are the three works of literature which 
encouraged Walker to compose the poem Crusus Journal. Now, let me introduce with the book Robinson Crusoe written by Daniel Defoe. The name of the novel is Robinson Crusoe, C-R-U-S-O-E. And the name of our poem under discussion is Crusoe's Journal. So the word Crusoe has been taken from Daniel Defoe's novel, Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe is a novel of sea adventure. Here the hero, Robinson Crusoe, traveled in a ship towards some unknown island. On his voyage, on his sea travel, his ship faced, a, faced an accident, faced a wreck. After the wreck of his ship, Crusoe was marooned on an unknown island. He was left alone on an island. On that island, there were wild animals and a cannibal tribal community who were cannibal by nature. Cannibal are the people who eat human flesh. And those cannibals attacked Robinson Crusoe but Robinson Crusoe, as a man from England and as a wise man, was able to defend himself from the attack of the cannibals and survived there for a long four years alone. And in the way, the prisoners of European society were left on that island as a sense of punishment. Those criminals who were charged by the European courts were left on this island to be eaten up by the cannibals. One such criminal was Friday. F-R-I-D-A-Y. Friday is the name of a criminal as described in the novel of Robinson Crusoe. So Friday was about to be eaten up by the cannibals. And at that moment, Robinson Crusoe rescued him. After the rescue of Friday, Friday expressed his obligation towards Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe taught him English language and made him his slave. Friday, after learning English language, became the slave of Robinson Crusoe. And later on, Robinson Crusoe gave Christianity to this man. So two important things were achieved in the life of Friday. First, he was taught English language and declared civilized. And then he was initiated into Christianity and called Christian. And all these elements will be found in this poem. Friday, Christianity, English language. These are the terms which we shall find in the poem. This is why I am telling you about this Robinson Crusoe. Now, I will not go forward without telling you something about Genesis, the Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. In the Genesis, the story of creation of the universe has been described. That the Lord who was living in the heaven brought a strange idea in his mind to create the third world. First world was the heaven where gods were living. Second, wa second world was the hell where the satans or demons were living. And God brought the strange idea of creating the third world where he decided to keep a creature who would have two hands, two eyes, two legs, one beautiful head, one be uh, a beautiful skin, beautiful conduct, and beautiful behavior. 
So after the creation of the third world, the archangel asks to God, O oh God, whom are you going to place in this third world? Then God planned the idea of creating such a creature who would have two hands, two legs, a beautiful nose, a, a, a face. And according to the imagination of God, what he created was a man. He brought the shape of a complete man and he gave a name to the man and his name was Adam. Adam was given place in the third world and this third world was called earth. And when Adam came to this earth, Adam was given the power of giving names to all the elements. He, Adam gave name to the flower, name to the animals, name to the water streams, name to the star, name to the moon. So he created, Adam created a number of nouns to give identity to different elements of the earth. And about Louis Stevenson's novel, I will speak to you later. Now, with this idea of Genesis and Robinson Crusoe, let us come to the poem, Crusoe's Journal. Crusoe's Journal has been divided into three parts. Part one, we shall give a name to part one for our easy understanding. Part one, its name will be given, Salvaging the Savages. Remember the word, please. Salvaging, S-A-L-V-A-G-I-E-N-G. -E Salvaging the Savages. Savages means uncivilized, barbaric, tribal people. And salvaging means giving them light, giving them purity of civilization that is called salvaging so let us begin with the poem the first line of the poem cast the background of the poem that in the first line what we find is that the poet all of a sudden finds himself in a beach house placed between the sea and the forest so in between the sea and the forest, there is a beach house, B-E-S-E-H, -E beach house. And in that beach house, the poet is discovered by the readers. And at that time, the poet is living in the beach house alone. He is alone there quite intentionally because he wants to create some poetry there. This is why he is alone. And in this lonely beach house, the poet considers himself to be Friday. Remember the word Friday, which is described in the novel of Robinson Crusoe. Friday was a cannibal type criminal who was given Christian religion who was taught English language and who was allowed to shine in the, to bat in the sunshine of civilization. So in that beach house, the poet considers himself to be Friday, whereas he considers the English people, the dominant colonial masters to be crucial. As Crusoe had imparted English education to Fryman, Friday, the poet also wants such some education of language from the English colonial master. <clears throat> so when Robinson Crusoe was left alone marooned on the island at that time in front of him there was a wrecked ship when he found that the ship was gradually sinking into water he jumped into the ship and collected all the materials of the ship 
different materials, different tools were collected from the ship. He brought all those tools to the island and he used those tools to conceal the impression of a modern civilization they are on that lonely island. So he had a number of scientific tools with him, like this, like Crusoe, the poet in the beach house wants to have some elements which he would combine together and make prose. So in the attempt of making prose, from different different disjointed elements the poet brings into his mind the memory of the genesis so in the way of composing some prose lines in that lonely beach house the poet reminds himself of the book the genesis so in the first stanza the poet has made the illusion of please remember the word illusion not illusion i i am not uh, uttering the word illusion not i l l u s i u n my word is illusion a l l u s i o n Allusion means writing some historical or mythological names in a poem of modern age. So in the first part of the poem, in the first stanza of the poem, the poet has made allusion of three important figures one from literature, that is Robinson Crusoe. Second from Christian mythology, that is Adam. Third is Ben Gunn, a literary character. And another man is Christopher Columbus, a historical character. So in the first in the first stanza, he makes reference to three persons: literary figure Crusoe. Crusoe is considered the Adam of this new island. So now come to the word island. Here, island represents the Caribbean islands, and Crusoe represents the English masters. And Friday represents all the native citizens of our Caribbean land. So Crusoe, who is considered the Adam of this new island, has been empowered to give names to different places of Caribbean nations. So all the names like Barbados, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago, who has given these names to these islands? It is the British people. So British people like, Christ, like Adam of the Genesis have given names to these places, have given numeric, a, a generic identity to these places. Crusoe also salvages Friday as described in the novel of Daniel Defoe. Like this, the Englishman also salvaged the tribal, native, or indentured laborers of Caribbean nations by imposing upon them English language. Crusoe is also compared. Uh, Robinson Crusoe is also compared to Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus landed on this West Indian region as an explorer first. 
but when he came to this region for the second time he came as a christian missionary whose sole purpose was to christianize the illiterate barbaric tribals of caribbean land so the christian missionaries who accompanied Christ, uh, Colum- uh, this man columbus they spread over all the areas of caribbean states and they christianized everybody as crusoe had christianized friday sorry for yeah friday and converted into him into a civilized christian like this christopher marlow and his missionary companions christianized the whole area of caribbean states and turned the barbaric tribals into civilized civilized people that the motive of the christian missionary was to utter the word remember the word word w o r d with w capital it means word means here the sermons the teachings coming from the mouth of jesus christ that the christian missionaries disseminated words among the tribal people of caribbean region and by introducing the word they converted the people into christianity and when the missionaries utter the teachings of jesus christ the intonation and accent of their speech similarized with those of the english people or english masters and realizing this the poet says that that the christian masters or the british colonial power has given me the boon of english language and it is by virtue of english language that i have been christianized i have been civilized and i am able to write something in english language so towards the end of this stanza derek walcott uses a very sensible and catchy sentence poetic line the line is that we make his language ours here his means crusoe crusoe had given the english language first to friday like it like crusoe the english people first introduced english language on the soil of caribbean nations so this is why the poet says we we means we the caribbean people make your language ours your language has become ours and by learning your christianity and by learning your english language we have become the flesh eater of jesus christ the poetic line which i may like to quote here is we learn with them to eat the flesh of christ mark we learn with them to eat the flesh of christ that our forefathers were cannibals they were eating flesh you english people came here taught us english language and you converted us to civilized cannibals because the poet here is telling we learn with you to eat the flesh of christ that after becoming christians after knowing english language 
we completely at the flesh of jesus christ so the line eat my flesh and drink my blood this is a poetic line taken from the genesis in the genesis jesus christ uh advises to his followers my dear followers don't spare me eat my flesh do not be at rest until you completely eat my flesh and drink up my blood the moment you eat my flesh and the moment you drink up my blood you become 100% christian so your blood and flesh means my wisdom my knowledge not my real blood and flesh so like this derek walker says that we were cannibals our forefather were cannibals they were eating flesh they were uncivilized you introduced english language and by that we became civilized rather we became civilized cannibals who ate the flesh and blood of jesus christ this is the analysis of first stanza of the poem now come to the second stanza and we shall give another name to the second stanza for our understanding and its name will be given multiple personalities of Rousseau and childhood nostalgia of Derek Walcott. Multiple personalities of Rousseau. In this stanza of the poem, Derek Walcott has been presented having multiple personalities. Rousseau was a cast away man. cast away means a person who has been left marooned m a r o o n e d marooned alone on an island that man is called cast away man crusoe had has multiple personalities in this stanza crusoe has been presented as a cast away man a discoverer a colonizer a linguist and a missionary four or five personality facets have been given to crusoe in this poem so as a castaway man crusoe was first discovered on an unknown island like crusoe the english people first came to on Un unknown island that was later on known as caribbean nations crusoe was a discoverer like crusoe the discovery of caribbean land was made by columbus crusoe was a colonizer Cluso colonized the island where he had been left marooned he not only suppressed the original cannibals there he also converted fry day who was a cannibal into a civilized christian so the responsibility of the colonizer is to uh civilize the uncivilized races that were living in the territories under their sway and accordingly like crusoe the english people came to caribbean nation and they civilized the people crusoe has been presented as a linguist because he taught english language to pride like crusoe the english people or the colonial masters imposed english language on the natives of caribbean nations crusoe was a missionary baptizing primen or uh, converting him into christianity so like crusoe the english people 
popularized Christianity among the tribal people of Caribbean nation. So all these personalities have been reflected in the second stanza. Unfortunately, we are out of time. So I am bound to uh, put a stop here. And if you have any doubt from the persons I have covered, you may say it to me. Welcome, friends. Any doubt? No, sir. It was completely understood. Thank you for that. OK. Nice of you. Then let us disperse. Thank you. Thank you, sir.